Please read this disclaimer. This videos all the character and all of its contents, including any disease and opinions expressed by the narrator, are strictly for entertainment purposes only. And it is not intended in any way as a substitute for professional service and consultation from licensed therapist, doctor, attorney, or other licensed professional service provider. Each person must make their own life decision, and those decisions are theirs. Hey listeners welcome back to another out of the world new story with Revolving Time, where we bring you real life stories that explore the complexities of the human experience. We hope that our stories have provided you with insights, inspiration, and a renewed appreciation for the power of human resilience. Today's story was published by Michael A. Jones and is about A month ago husband has found out that his wife has been meeting a guy regularly. This had been going on for at least six months. How did he find out? Okay let's go to the story and see how did he find out about his wife and fidelity. My name is Sal, short for Salvatore. I am of Italian descent. My parents have been in UK since the late 1960s. The family business is the ubiquitous Italian restaurant which has been the mainstay of my family and the many cousins and others that made up the extended part of it. We are a close-knit bunch when it comes down to it but unlike in times past we do not live in each other's lives on a daily basis. Family events are always well attended and no one wants to be the one who isn't where they should be and suffer the looks from my grandma, the matriarch, she who must always be obeyed. No matter what, I married Connie seven years ago. We were both approaching 30 at the time. We seemed to be drawn together after being in relationships that were not heading anywhere and in some ways although satisfying did not have the stuff that a long-term relationship requires. We met, partied and had fun for almost two years before we took the plunge and got married. My grandma had never warmed to Connie, she seemed to just about tolerate her is all. She was never out and out rude or anything but there was always an air of mistrust as she looked at Connie as if she was waiting for her to step out of line somehow. How do women know or feel these things? It is beyond me. At times she could barely conceal her feelings for my wife, but never voiced her opinion in front of others. She said to me just before we married you keep an eye on that one Sal. She has a look about her, be careful, and always guard your heart. That was all she said but for some reason her words replayed like a backdrop in my mind. Update. A month ago I had found out that my wife had been meeting a guy regularly. Well at least once every two weeks anyway. This had been going on for at least six months I found after some digging. How did I find out? That was easy really, well easier than I would have thought. She made a tiny mistake one night that started me thinking that all was not well it was as simple as that. That day when I found the pen, it was one of those cheap ones that hotels provide with their welcome packs. I couldn't think where it had appeared from. I know I hadn't stayed at this particular hotel before. I always use a well-known chain when I have to travel, which is usually once a month. I save up the loyalty points not that it amounted to much. Anyway I had asked Connie if she had a pen one evening when we were out and she fished this biro from her voluminous handbag. As soon as I had finished using it I saw the inscription, and a small alarm bell went off in my head. I knew I hadn't stayed there and could not think of any reason for my wife to be in possession of a pen from that hotel either so I was somewhat puzzled. Connie put the pen back in her bag without a word. I said nothing but decided I needed to look into it and see if there was anything I needed to be worried about. Small and insignificant it may have been but it was the tiny crack in our marriage that would prove to be the source of consequences. I can't explain why but I just put it out of my mind at the time and didn't dwell on it as we were meeting friends for a meal and drinks. It was a sort of regular thing that we met up with two other couples occasionally for a meal and then enjoy a few drinks and some dancing at the end of the night. We were sitting in the lounge bar of our favorite restaurant at the time when the infamous pen made its appearance. It was our regular haunt, comfortable, easygoing with a relaxed atmosphere. It didn't hurt that it was run by one of my cousins too so of course there was a healthy family discount to which my own family reciprocated in their turn. The discounts were sufficient to pay respect but also not enough to be insulting to the owner, respect given and received. It was a two-way thing that worked. The other two couples were Carlo and his wife Joanne and Phil and his wife Terry. Carlo and Joanne were older than us by some five years or so. We were connected, of course, distantly but still family. Carlo was a little old-fashioned in some ways and he had led an interesting life although not all of it was within the law. He was a great bear of a man and I recall when Connie first met him he terrified her but a sweeter, kinder and more gentle man you could not wish to meet. That is until you upset him. One word, don't. Carlo was like an older brother to me. He was always there for me, kept me out of trouble and had once or twice managed to deal with a problem or two with ease. His wife Joanne was a lovely lady, she adored Carlo and they were a perfect match, she was pretty. She was the only person Carlo was afraid of. He adored her and didn't care who knew it. Phil, I had met through my job and we seemed to get on really well. 
He was the same age as me and had a similar outlook on life. We played golf together every now and then and along with his wife Terry we socialized at the golf club so all was good really. Terry got along with Connie. And they often spent days out spending large amounts of money shopping for God knows what and taking a long time doing it. All I ever saw were the large bags that came through the door with Connie after one of those expeditions. Where Phil was always warm and friendly Terry seemed standoffish at times and this was true especially recently. Then she seemed to snap out of it and become part of the group. I often thought there was something amiss with her and mentioned it to Connie more than once but she just shut down with the usual women's issues when a woman doesn't want to explain something. We sat in the lounge area sipping our cocktails when Carlo and Joanne came in. I stood and greeted him as we all hugged and exchanged kisses. The waiter had fresh drinks to our table within a minute of Carlo and Joanne joining us. It always amazed Connie how we were looked after whenever we went anywhere. My cousin knew we were a party of six and indicated our table was ready. We were shown through to our usual corner table, secluded and private but with a view of the door, something Carlo always insisted on wherever she went. We didn't ask her why. Phil and Terry coming. Joanne asked Connie. I spoke to her earlier. She said they were definitely coming but may be a little late as Phil hadn't got home yet. Carlo just looked at the two women and gave me a look. I looked at him. He just shook his head imperceptibly. I let it go but I would ask Carlo about that later. As we finished the first round of drinks Phil and Terry appeared. Both looked a little flushed, but there was something else too. Carlo just looked at them his face saying nothing. Impassive. I saw that look again. What did he know? There was definitely something there. We sat and soon got into chatting about work, our date, and the usual banter about families and kids. After an excellent meal we filtered through to the lounge area again and the music filled the air. By this time the girls were all eager to get on the dance floor and work off some of the calories just taken on. We three guys sat for a while. That was the signal for us to do our duty and escort them. Carlo led Joanne back to the table after the first number and as I looked round I could see Phil and Terry still on the floor but they seemed to be a little stiff together. Is everything okay with those two? I whispered to Connie. Yes I think so. Terry hasn't said anything. I looked again. Something was definitely not good here. Phil and Terry arrive at the table. Terry grabs her hand back and announces she's going to the restroom. Everything okay Phil? Carlo asked coolly. Yes, sure no problem. Maybe a few too many of these though he held up his glass and indicated for another round. A fresh set of drinks arrived before the women got back from their conference. Terry slid into the booth against Phil. Their body language betrayed them. Connie looked at me. There was something in her look that told me all was not well here, and she looked away. Carlo nudged me under the table with his knee. I looked round, and he winked at me. He knows something. A few more dances with us changing partners as we usually did helped ease the tension until it was time to go. My cousin had called the taxis at a predetermined time and we made ready to leave. I looked round and caught Connie talking with Phil across the room. My mind registered that as another oddity of the evening, I thought I would ask her about it later, or maybe not. We said our goodbyes and the taxis took us our separate ways. So what is the story with Phil and Terry? I asked straight out. Nothing, they are fine. She smiled and then looked out the window at the passing lights. I sat quietly thinking not for the first time that something was off here. I didn't know what but there was something going on. I decided that I would contact Carlo in the morning. Connie proceeded to try to mess my brains out that night. I hope you remember that I love you. I love you Sal. Don't forget it. I looked at her. She seemed strange. There was just a hint of something but I couldn't put my finger on it. I love you too babe. Don't you ever forget that too. You are my wife. No one is going to take you from me and I will never give you cause either. I held her tightly as I kissed her face. We fell asleep. Before I dropped off I laid staring at the ceiling. The odd things of the evening kept coming back to me. I must call Carlo first thing. Next morning, Connie got up and headed out the door for an early morning session at the gym. I pottered round the house as I drank glass after glass of orange juice to help clear my head. I sat at my laptop and googled the hotel that was inscribed on the pen I had seen in her handbag. The search came back and I checked the location. It was across London from us but easy to get to. There was on-site parking. It looked very swish really. I took down the telephone numbers and email address anyway, but saw they also had a facility to book online too. I would need to check the history to see if there was anything there. I checked, nothing, nothing at all. The history was clean. I was getting out. I called Carlo. Carlo, it's Sal, so what is going on with Phil and Terry? I get the impression you know something. Do I need to be concerned? Sal, meet me at my brother's bar around midday. I will fill you in then with what I know. Best not do it over the phone. Okay. Sure, I will be there. Sal, come alone okay? Yes of course I understand. The line went dead. Now I was concerned. 
did I need to be? I was worried. Connie bounced through the door an hour or so later. She looked refreshed. Good workout. I asked. Yes, it was great. I needed that babe. I am going over to see Carlo later. He wants to talk about something or other. Shouldn't be too long though. What does he want Sal? Connie looked at me. Another look I couldn't read. What is going on? Everyone round me is giving off vibes that are starting to worry me. Update 1. I slid into my car and cruised slowly across town to Carlo's brother's place. Before I could press the entry buzzer the door opened and Carlo stood aside me in. As he did he gave a quick look outside as if to see if I had been followed. I watched him with curiosity. Okay Carlo, what is going on? He looked me in the eye and said, follow me. I followed him through the bar and into the back rooms where there was an office set up like a study. He closed the door behind me and we sat either side of a large oak desk. Sal, I care for you very much so I want you to listen to me carefully. I promised your old man that I would always look out for you. I don't break my word. What I will tell you is going to hurt but you must hear me out. Okay. I shuddered inside as I saw pain in his eyes, my mind starting to race with possibility, but deep in my gut I knew it had something to do with my wife. This man had been close to me all my life. I knew my dad was as close to him as if Carlo were his own son. He was a cousin but had lived with us since he was a child. He opened the top drawer to the desk he was sitting in and pulled out a large manila envelope. Carefully he slid it across the desk towards me. My eyes were fixed on it. I knew that by opening the envelope my life would be forever changed. I looked up and saw pain in his eyes again. Sal, remember I am here for you okay? Carlo watched me as I pulled the contents from the envelope. I saw the photos, big glossy pictures of a woman and a man having play. They were clearly identifiable and caught in various positions in what looked like a cheap hotel room. As I looked I could see my wife with the man. Sal you okay? I looked at my marriage break before my eyes. I looked up at Carlo, my face wet with stinging tears. What? How? When did you? Who is he? My eyes wide with shock, fear and not a little anger brewing too. Sal, I heard a whisper a few weeks ago that Connie was up to something. I had no evidence until a couple of days ago just before we all went out the other evening actually. I know some things for sure but there are still things I am working on okay. As to the how, a friend of mine recognized her when he saw her in a restaurant in South London he thought the guy she was with was a little too friendly to be treating a married woman like that in public. Sal they thought they were out of the area and safe I think. The who is Tony Drew. Yes you should know him he is Phil's brother. I sat transfixed as his words started to sink in. Images flashed through my mind of our evening out. The looks between Phil and Connie and then with Terry too. It was adding up. I found a pen from one of the hotels across London. Is that where they? Yes Sal. I am real sorry pal but my guy followed them there at the start of last week. You were on an overnighter I understand. The first meeting was also when you were away too. I looked at him. I am going to kick the bast. Easy Sal that could get you into a world of trouble, and she isn't worth doing time for and neither is he. Divorce her and rid yourself of her and let me deal with him. No Carlo, as much as I respect you I cannot allow that. I need to sort that myself and he needs to know it was me too. Is he married? Do you know where he lives, works and all that? I do have some information that is in the envelope that will answer that Sal. But don't do anything rash we need to plan this carefully and we don't want to be thrown in prison either do we? He isn't married but from what I can make out he is divorced. No kids but he does have a liking for women, especially the married ones. Maybe he doesn't want any commitment or something. Okay, so what do you have in mind? How well do you get on with your friend Phil? Reason I ask is he was behaving a little odd at the restaurant with Terry and your wife too. I was watching him. I think he knows what is going on. If that is the case can you call him a friend any longer? I saw that too. I am wondering if his wife is in on it too the way they seem to be acting. I don't see any sense in hanging around longer than necessary Sal. I think we should shut it as soon as possible. If it was a one-off thing then maybe, but seeing this I just can't get through that. This is all too much. The pictures will stay in my mind every time I look at her. No I can't forgive or forget. I understand. But that being the case you need to start to protect yourself now. It may take a little while but if you plan it first you will at least get some payback and believe me you need that. I need to think on this Carlo. I want them both to suffer though. He leaned forward and slipped a business card in front of me. Divorce guy. I have already primed him on your situation. All you need do is give him a call and say go and he will be at it. Believe me his is good. He is also a cousin. He laughed at that. We had cousins all over the place. I couldn't help but smile. We sat for another hour until we had a plan of action. I called Carlo's cousin. We agreed not to have her served until everything was ready. In the meantime I needed to find out how involved Phil and his wife Terry were in this somehow. I left Carlo and slowly drove back towards home. 
I parked my car and walked towards the door. I couldn't hear a sound as I entered. Connie is out. I found a note on the kitchen table. It said Terry's gone. Love you X. I get it and throw it in the bin. I called Carlo. She has gone out to see Terry so she says. I know. She is at Phil and Terry's place now but Terry isn't there. Just Phil. I have a guy tailing her as we discussed. He will stay with it as long as we need him too okay. Sure. So where is Terry then? That is if she was who she was going to see. If anything turns up Sal I will let you know on your mobile okay. I sat and looked at the clock. It was three hours later that Connie arrived back home. Hi lover, how was your day? She kissed me on the cheek as she headed to the kitchen. Was okay. Carlo had something he wanted to discuss with me as all. We are working on a plan to deal with it though. She looked at me expecting me to give her some details but I didn't. I wanted her to ask. A minute later she did just that. It's just a personal matter with a cousin that needs sorting out. He thinks his wife is making a mug of him so he wanted some advice really. I smiled at her taking in the change of expression as she tried to hold her casual smile. I am sure it will work out though. She turned away. The rest of the weekend passed slowly. I couldn't bring myself to have love with her as much as I wanted to. I kept seeing the photos that Carlo had shown me of her and Tony. I couldn't understand how she could do it with him and act normally around me too. She was a far better liar and actress than I could ever have thought. Sat night was okay but Sunday night she came to me and I could tell from her body language she wanted loving. I kissed her lightly, but I had the image of her with Tony's, so how could she be all mine? Cheating slot. We lay quietly in our bed each with our own thoughts. I slipped out of bed as soon as she was asleep and went downstairs. I sat at my computer. I saw a message from Carlo pop up. I checked the time it was a little after 1am. All the wheels are turning here and everything is in place as we discussed. Okay I thought all I need to do now is create a short overnighter for Wednesday and we are go. I messaged him back okay. I slid back into bed an hour later. I tried to sleep but the rage was not helping me. I crawled out of bed and showered before dressing and going downstairs. Connie met me with a smile and breakfast, coffee and toast. She sat down and sipped her coffee. I have to stop over in Leeds on Wednesday will you be okay? She looked at me over her cup. I could almost see her mind working. Just the one night. She asked casually. Yes but won't be back until late Thursday night though. Is this something to do with Carlo? Yes and that cousin I told you about. It's nothing really but he may need some support. Carlo gives me the creeps. I am not sure what kind of support he could offer though. You will be surprised at how good a friend he can be. But I wouldn't like to get on his wrong side related or not. He has a knack of sorting out problems too. I watched her face pale slightly. But her mind was still working on a plan I could see it. I looked at my watch and stood to leave for the day. I have to get going sweetheart. See you later and be good while I am away. I headed for my appointment with my solicitor and spent an hour with him going through the options and signing papers for him. He had gotten copies of the envelope's contents already. He confirmed he would have everything ready for Wednesday afternoon for me to collect. I running to the bank and shunted all the money from our savings into a new account in my name only as well as sending a large amount to Carlo to hold on my behalf too. The current account was left as it stood. It covered all the bills so there was little or no spare cash held there. I emptied our safety deposit box of cash and jewelry and opened a new account in my name only at another bank. I also stopped her allowance which fed her own account. That would knock her quickly and by the end of the month she would be in trouble I was sure. Satisfied I went into my office and dealt with the routine daily stuff. My secretary, Sadie, was a great help and I knew she could run the ship without me and do a far better job at it too I thought. In a lull between signing papers I caught her looking at me. I sighed and spun my chair round to face her directly. I had known her for almost five years. She had been nothing but professional at all times and fiercely loyal to the point of being protective it felt. She was always polite and cool with Connie but there was an undercurrent between them I was sure. Connie had mentioned her attitude several times towards her but I always brushed that off as a woman's issue and between them. I looked at her oval face. Her dark blue eyes stared at me with concern. I knew I had to say something. I felt the need to tell someone something. I was cracking up inside and she knew it. I took a deep breath as I tried to gather my thoughts and harness my emotions. Sadie, there are things going on that may cause some disruption this week so if I am not around you know what to do to keep things running. Okay. Yes boss, you can rely on me. Anything I can help you with. Sadie was a married woman in her 40, a smart and elegant woman who I trusted implicitly. I looked at her as she seemed to read my innermost thoughts. Connie is playing around on me. You are kidding me. Oh my god Sal, that's terrible. Are you sure? I mean do you know for sure? 
I just nodded slowly. She saw the buildup of tears in my eyes. She hugged me tightly as she stood beside me. I could feel the love from this woman in that hug and I knew that was what was missing at home. I sobbed for the first time since I had found out a few short days ago. She held me until I managed to get control again. She held my face in her hands and looked into my eyes. Sal, you are a good man. Don't let anyone tell you different okay. What are you going to do? I am going to divorce and kick the bass too. Well yes something like that but I don't want to involve you or anyone else Sadie please understand. Don't do anything wrong Sal, please be careful. The rest of the day was a real grind. But Sadie was worth her weight in gold by the way she looked after me. Her husband is a lucky guy. She fended off all comers and just dealt with any in her own inimitable way. I heard her at one point tell someone to just duck off. I smiled at that. It was so good to have good people round me like her. At home I sat with Connie watching TV. When the phone rang, she took it out into the hallway to answer. I could hear her talking quietly, but not enough to make out what was going on. After about five minutes she returned. What's up? I asked curiously. Oh nothing just Terry going on about her. And Phil having another spat about nothing important as usual. I just wish they would either make up. What do you mean? Are they having big problems? Phil never mentioned it. I watched her face for anything that would give her away. Well it is something and nothing really I think. I am sure they will work it out. Was that what was going on when we were at the restaurant? Connie looked at me nervously. She wasn't aware I had noticed anything between them and indeed her part in it too. Now she had started this series of lies and was getting tied up in them. I smiled at her discomfort but still couldn't work out what Terry and Phil's part was in this, unless it was unrelated. Yes they had had an argument before going out and then it sort of simmered all evening. Is that what you were doing with Phil? I mean trying to help them sort out their argument. Yes, Terry asked me to speak to Phil is all. So what was it all about Connie? Maybe I can help. I smiled as I watched my wife start to tie herself in knots. It's okay Sal. I am sure they have it almost sorted out now. Good, glad to hear that. I don't like the thought of a friend's marriage in trouble. He isn't cheating is he? No, no nothing like that. Is it Terry that has been playing around then? Look Sal I don't know okay. Let's mind our own business and leave them to it. My thoughts exactly, but I may mention it to Phil when I see him just see if he is okay though. Her eyes narrowed as I looked back at the TV apparently finished with the conversation. A few minutes later I casually asked her. So, if neither is playing away and Terry asked you to speak to Phil, what was that about? Sal, leave it. She got up from the sofa and stormed out of the room. I sat back giggling. I know all I needed to find out now was what was the other couple's role in this. The rest of the evening we spent avoiding each other. It seemed to satisfy us both and very little was said. I decided that I would discuss Phil and Terry tomorrow. I was up early next day, Tuesday and headed out the door as Connie came down the stairs. She was still groggy as I passed her on my way to the garage. Need to get moving I have a lot to do before going off tomorrow. Update 2. Things had been so cool until this past week or so. She had met Tony one evening a few months ago when she had been out with Terry. They were in a small club with another couple of friends when he walked in. Seeing his sister-in-law he approached the group and smiling offered to get them all a drink. The girls all smiled at the handsome guy as he checked them all out. Terry had noticed that Tony and Connie had made eye contact and something passed between them. Stay away from Tony he is not a gentle. He has even come on to me before now. No worries there Terry I have my cell. But he is rather a smooth good looking guy. Weren't you even a little tempted? Terry shook her head at her friend. Don't. Terry had done her duty as a friend but saw something going on behind her friend's eyes that she didn't like. The rest of their evening had passed without incident as far as she saw anyway. Tony had cornered Connie and slipped her his number however. During the following few days Tony had somehow managed to get Connie's number and called a couple of times and spent a few innocent minutes chatting and flirting. By the time of her next girl's night out she knew Tony would be there again. This time there was some dancing involved and as soon as Tony had her in his arms he started to work on her seduction. He poured flattery and compliments all over her, lots of little touches as they chatted. She left the club with her friend who was roundly telling her off and urging her to stop this before anything bad happened. Connie was still not listening and brushed off her warnings stating that nothing had happened anyway. As Terry lead her away Tony smiled. He wanted Connie and was going to have her sooner or later he was certain of that. For the next few weeks the phone calls became regular and the flirting intensified and Connie's seduction was begun in earnest. Things changed when Terry had to cry off their regular night out and Tony saw an opportunity during one of their calls. He managed to convince Connie to meet him at the club alone, just as friends of course. Connie had thought about it, and now the opportunity had presented itself she grabbed it and a little too quickly agreed to meet him. 
She had dressed as she normally did to meet Terry but this was different. She felt different. She was excited. She could not stop it not that she wanted to anyway. She had been chatting with Tony and they had built a relationship it felt to her and now she was ready to take it to the next level. Grabbing her purse she almost skipped towards the front door. That night was the first time. From then on it was inevitable there would be more. They had an evening filled with flirting, touching, and dancing. Tony led her towards his car and whisked her to the Marriott. He knew Connie was ready. They are slept together until almost one in the morning. Connie was almost overcome with panic when she saw the time. Rushing to get cleaned up and dressed she begged Tony to run her home, as it was it would take at least another 30 minutes anyway. That night was a major scare for Connie. The next few weeks Connie continued to meet Tony. During my overnighter she had spent the night with Tony at the hotel, they did everything possible. Terry warned Connie to stop before she got caught what Connie was doing after several weeks. She had even discussed with her husband Phil over it and wanted him to put pressure on Tony to stop before it destroyed anything. Terry had told Connie to stop it and that she had spoken to Tony as well as getting Phil to intercede too. Phil was messed between loyalty to his brother and his friend. The longer it went on the more difficult it was to find a way out without causing a major problem. Connie knew it would have to end soon and she realized the risks she was taking were only adding to the attraction of keeping it going. It was dangerous. If I ever got to find out all would break loose. The scene at the restaurant was too close for comfort and with I asking what was going on it was definitely getting out of control. She knew Tony didn't love her or want her in any way other than as an easy lay but she was still drawn to him. She decided it would end tomorrow. It would be the last time. She had to call a halt to this but they would have one more night together. She felt better somehow that the decision had been made but of course she still had to convince Tony too. It was late when I came through the door. The plans were all set. I had the papers from my solicitor in my car now. The official set would be delivered by registered post. I felt tense and headed straight for my trusty bottle of JD. Connie was watching me. I was sure looking at Connie she was dealing with her own problems. You okay Sal? I didn't answer at first. I turned and fixed her gaze with my own stare. I could see her reaction. She looked scared, uneasy. Just a rough day. I need a shower. Then I have to get ready for this thing with Carlo tomorrow. She didn't like this sentence it frightened her. I stood under the hot jets of water. My eyes leaked tears for my marriage. My wife, my future was so messy. My heart was breaking and I felt like I wanted to run away and hide. Stepping out of the shower I going to downstairs. Connie eyed me as I entered the kitchen. What's for dinner? I asked as casually as I could manage. I thought we could order something in for a change. I don't feel like cooking tonight. Sure, no problem, Chinese okay. Yes, that would be good. I made the call and while we waited we sat in the lounge with the TV warbling in the background. Dinner was quiet, tense almost. What time do you have to go in the morning? She asked casually. I will be off out around 9 a.m. We have a flight booked at 11 so we don't have to rush. Shouldn't take too long though problem as we don't get to meet with the problem until tomorrow evening. But will be good to meet Carlo's cousin at last anyway. You know what family is like. It is already almost 10 p.m. I looked at her. She had a look of sadness in her eyes. I thought it might be over tomorrow. She thought to herself. I woke to the aroma of freshly brewed coffee my nostrils. Something I had always loved first thing in the morning. I sipping coffee the which served to wake me fully. I sat and ate some toast citing a rather full stomach after the meal last night. Silence broke the air in the kitchen as we drank our coffee. We each watched the other but looked away before being seen. It was tense and we both wanted it to be over. I looked at my watch. I have to get going. I need to be at Carlos to pick him up. She must realize I know surely. She looked up at me smiling as I passed her. Have a good trip and hurry back Sal. Update 3. Breathing a huge sigh of relief and slowly with tears clouding my eyes I turned the wheel and drove the engine down the road and away from my wife. I did not look back. I could not. My face wet with tears. My heart heavy with sadness. That was it, the day of judgment. Connie picked up the phone a few minutes later and listened to the tone in her ear. He has gone. You still good for tonight? Oh yes baby definitely. We will make it a good night too. I had to tell Phil to back off though Tony. He is getting angry on me. Has he said anything to you? Yes, but I told him to duck off too and wife of his too. She has been going on at me too. She won't say anything though I know that. Well it isn't going to stop us baby. I am really looking forward to tonight. I got my mate to get us the same room as before so we are good to go. Room 415 okay just get the key at the desk and see you there for 8 okay. Okay got it. I will call you later. The couple hung up on their call and a man smiled. He tapped out a text giving the details of the lover's tryst before recovering his listening equipment and leaving his post. Carlo saw the text and smiled grimly to me. You sure you want this cell? 
I have to ask before things go too far. You know where this will end, don't you? I looked across at my lifelong friend seeing the deep concern behind his eyes and heard the warning in his words. Carla, I loved that woman like nothing I have ever loved before or will ever again. I gave her everything I had and I can't let this go. I have to do something so she knows what she has done and that she will pay forever as will her lover. I just have to do it Carlo, you understand. Good to go Sal. We have some time to kick so let's go eat and I will fill you in on the details. I was considering calling on Terry and Phil at some point to find out how much they knew and ask why they neglected to mention it to me. We would leave well alone. If they realize you now you will be giving the police evidence of motive before the fact. Leave well alone for now there will be time later don't worry. We went out to the front of the bar and I was introduced to Carlo's brother Alfredo. Good to meet you Sal. He smiled and shook his hand. Hello Sal, my uncle Carlo has told me a lot about you. Pleased to meet you, I am Alicia. Alfredo smiled at Sal and ushered his daughter away. Sal, I am sorry for my daughter's impetuousness. She is headstrong the way they are these days. Alfredo, it is my pleasure to meet you and any member of your family. For too long we have missed out on getting together. Family is everything as I am sure you know. Please give my regards to your wife and the rest of your family too. Alfredo smiled. Thank you, I will. My mobile phone went off just after 3 in the afternoon. I looked at the screen and saw it was Connie. Hi Connie, what's up? I called to see if you had got there okay is all. Everything okay? How is Carlo and his little problem? We are both fine thanks for asking. We are here but just having a late lunch before moving on. What do you have planned for tonight love? I asked the question as I would normally but I also wanted to hear her lie again. I am going over to see Terry. I think things are okay there now. That's good. I was going to give Phil a call later anyway. I think he will be out this evening with his brother I understand. I have never met him. What is he like? Oh, well I only met him the once. He seems rather nice as far as I could tell anyway. Bit like Phil really. I have to run here Connie. We have a hotel to get into before our meeting this evening. So have a nice evening and give my regards to Terry. Okay love. Love you bye baby. Bye. As I cut the call, Carlo looked at me and saw the pain. Okay Sal, we are set to go. Let's go meet the guys. We left Alfredo in the bar and headed into the private quarters. There I found a group of four men who all greeted me. Sal these are very good friends of mine. I trust them with my life and have done so many times in the past. They will not let you down. A phone rang. Carlo picked up his mobile. Yes, okay, good we will be moving in five minutes. I looked at the clock it was past eight o'clock. The time had just flown past. The men exited the room and headed for their car. They would collect a van nearer to the destination. We left by the back door and got in a parked Mercedes that had been arranged for us. That brings my story to where I am now, parking the Mercedes in a side street not 200 yards from the hotel. We sat in silence at just after 9 p.m. A text pinged into Carlo's phone. He looked at it and nodded to me. They have arrived. The boys are here and are in position. We sat in silence until his mobile lit up with another text. We are in. Exit is secured. Okay, let's go. In a moment I was following him as he headed for the front lobby of the hotel. All too quickly we arrived. My heart was pounding now. Carlo stepped out first and led me to the room. I saw the numbers 415 on the door and I knew my wife was on the other side of that door with another man. As we stepped up to the door the other four guys appeared as if from nowhere. They were dressed in hotel-style uniforms it looked like. I looked around and saw no one along the corridor. Carlo also pointed out the CCTV. Carlo led the guys into the bedroom. The lights were on. From where I was stood I could see my wife laid with Tony into the bed. They did not hear or see the men enter the room. Some reason can't share here what was happening to her lover. It all happened so fast. I flicked the light on and entered the room. I looked at my wife laid on the bed. She looked at me, with mask eye standing looking down at her. She cringed and tried to hide, screwing her eyes tightly as she cried and mumbled. I was wild with love, hate, and every feeling possible. Rage was uppermost. Carlo grabbed my hand and took G from my hand. He looked at me with his steely eyes and after asked me to cool down. Connie was crazy with fear, and then shock as she stared at the two men in front of her staring down at her. She started to shake her head wildly from side to side. The tears were flowing now too. She stared wide-eyed at the two silent men in front of her, and not a word had been said for destroy her evening. I saw the slight movement from Carlo at my side as he looked at his phone and knew we had to leave. I followed Carlo out the room leaving Connie on the bed. You took it out. I was worried for a second there, thought you'd lost control of your anger. I laughed grimly. Yes, just a good scare will do for now. I think the lesson will come when she sees Tony again. 
I am sure the guys will do the necessary with him. No need to dirty your hands, Sal. I know it's important to you that he knows you were there but I think he will remember this for a very long time anyway. I stared grimly ahead as we dodged through the dark streets towards our destination. We stepped inside the bar and Alfredo was waiting for us. It was almost 1am so he poured us healthy drinks. We sat quietly. Carlos' phone pinged and he read the message and smiled at me. All done and taken care of. The boys are on their way. I know I can't thank them enough for what they have done but I will never forget this night. Sal, shut up. It is done. You now have to deal with her. Sure, I understand. No more needed to be said. I remembered we had left her in the hotel. I wondered how she would get home or what if anything she would have to say about her adventure. She now knew that I was aware of her activities but would she say anything or confess? I doubted it somehow even with my knowing and catching her at it. There are rooms ready for you both when you are ready. Sleep didn't come easily as I replayed the events of the night and everything that led up to it. I also thought of Connie and how I last saw her. I was filled with sadness. I had loved the woman for so long. She was my everything. Now it was all gone. The only thing left was to face her and see how it broke out between us. I had the divorce papers already in my possession. She would have the official copy delivered to our home later today. By the time I was due to get home she would have no doubt as to what I knew. I suddenly had the thought that what if she didn't go home? Now she knew it was me at the hotel she would be terrified to go home for sure. I'd better call and get the papers diverted. Maybe at Terry's place? Yes she would go there I was sure. Almost seven hours or so later I was woken from my uncomfortable sleep by Alicia. Lunch time Sal, you have 30 minutes. Carlo said you have an afternoon flight to catch so time to get up. Your change of clothes are on the dresser. She patted my shoulder and left the room. Slowly I eased myself upright and dressed. Looking in the mirror I saw a face I thought I knew but it was changed. It was a changed me. I joined the others at the table and the normality was surreal yet comforting too. We ate, chatted and even laughed too. All too soon it was time to leave. We gathered our things and strolled to the car. Looking out the window as we pulled away I waved at the faces watching me leave. Update 4. I drove homeward slowly. I dropped Carlo off and Joanne came out to meet him. She grabbed him as he got out of the car and hugged him as if they were newlyweds. She came to me hugging me tightly. Sal, it will be okay. Understand this. There will be a tomorrow for you I know things will seem rough for a while but believe me you will be okay. I couldn't speak but Carlo gave me one of his man hugs and I was on my way home to face my cheating wife. Call me later Sal. I nodded and drove away trying not to think of anything I felt blank. I put my key in the door and turned it. The house sounded empty somehow. The heating had kicked in so it was warm, but not so welcoming. No sounds. It was quiet as I strode warily into the lounge, then the kitchen, nothing. I looked at my watch it was after 6 now. Connie should have been home. That is if she were trying to save our marriage. I checked my mobile, no calls or messages. I slumped into a chair in the lounge. I looked at the photograph of Connie and me on the mantle. I felt a surge of rage as I grabbed it and threw it across the room. I heard the phone ring. Hello. Oh, sorry I. Is that you Sal? A female voice asked. Yes, it is now what do you want? My tone was loud, direct and angry. It's Terry Sal, I. She almost whispered. Yes Terry, sorry bad time is all. What can I do for you? I breathed slower trying to regain my composure. Well, it's Connie. She is here and in a bit of a state really. I can't make out what has happened but something has and she is not good. She doesn't want to come home. She thinks you might hurt her somehow. I don't think she should go anywhere right now and definitely not drive herself. Terry, is she there? Yes of course she is. Ask her to talk to me. If she won't that tells me something and should do to you too. Then ask her what happened. See what she says. I listened to some murmuring and then the voices got a little louder. Terry came back on. She won't say anything Sal. I am worried about her. Terry, bear with me here. Just tell her that I am coming round to pick her up see what happens. I heard her tell Connie what I had said then the scream from Connie was answer enough. Sal, I don't know what to say to you. Terry, I know okay. What do you mean Sal? I know it all Terry. Sal, I am so sorry. So am I Terry. I know all about it. I know about the girls' nights out and the argument you had with Phil over it too. Sal I am so sorry. Phil couldn't persuade them to stop we both tried. I know we should have said something to you but we were caught in a bad situation. Terry was rambling now as she spoke quickly trying to get all the words out as fast as she could. Terry, rest assured I don't blame you and Phil for what she did with Tony I am just saddened that you didn't tell me early. I am afraid it has damaged our friendship. We will not speak of it again. Tell Connie that I won't come for her so she can relax but her things will be packed ready for her to collect. Sooner rather than later or they will go in the trash. I mean everything too. She no longer lives here. 
Lastly, I have some papers being delivered for her today. I have called the servers and had them redirected to your address as I had a hunch she may bolt to yours. Should be there any minute now I think. Tell the slot to think before she does anything, and especially before she calls me or anyone else. Got it. Okay Sal. I put the phone down and breathed out slowly. The past few days had taken it out of me, and as I sat in the now silent house I suddenly felt exhausted. I would have to face the bish later, but now I was in no state to kick her, but I would be soon. There would be no forgiveness. The call came. Hello, Sal, it's Carlo, you okay? Sorry it's early but just needed to make sure you are okay and haven't done anything wrong yet. Yes I am fine, my head hurts though. You don't need to worry I have been cool. She didn't come home but went to Terry and Phil's place. I spoke to her and filled her in on what I know so it is in the open now. I haven't heard Duck all since about 7.30 last night. I thought I would have after she was served but from what Terry said she was in a bit of a nervous when she arrived anyway. Carlo laughed. I began thinking about what to do today. I resolved to call my office and check on things there first then organize a locksmith, deal with the bank etc. Everything needed to be done. Even though I didn't want to lose her I knew I could not stay with her as the trust we had was gone. The papers that I know were served on her last night although I was sure I would hear something today once she got herself together. Just after 9 there was a knock at the door. I opened the door and saw Terry and Phil standing there. I stood silently looking at them both. Terry broke the silence. Sal, we had to come to apologize. It's the least we owe you. Can we come in and talk? I stepped back and held the door as they filed inside. I closed the door and pointed to the lounge. They sat together on the sofa as I sat in my lounger opposite. Okay, what did you want to say guys? Sal, we are both sorry. Phil began. So am I Phil, real sorry too. Sorry two people I thought were my friends couldn't tell me my wife was going after some strange. Sorry my wife felt the need to play someone else. I am sorry about a lot of things. Sal, we really are sorry. We tried to tell her, well both of them, but they wouldn't listen. I don't know what she was thinking. She is at our place now, still not making any sense but something bad seemed to have happened yesterday before she came back. Terry pleaded. What do you mean Terry? All I know is that I had to be away on Wednesday while the papers were being set up. I couldn't bear to even look at her. I went to a meeting in Leeds and then you called me. I assume you mean something happened between her and her lover, Tony. I wasn't going to volunteer any information my involvement yet. We don't know. We haven't heard from my brother. Phil said. I called him but there is no reply. He isn't at his flat either and Connie can't tell us where he might be. She just garbled something about being tied up and that he had left her in the hotel. Come on Phil, she must have said more than that. What happened? Obviously, something did. Did he do something to her? Phil and Terry looked at me stunned in my tone. They had never seen me in this state of rage before. Anyway, apart from him how is Connie? I take it she had the papers served to her last night. Yes Sal, she seemed to have calmed down after a while but when she was served it started her off again. Sal, she is rambling and not making any sense. Whatever happened has feel her really hard. When she arrived at ours she was upset, angry but above all scared and she won't say exactly what happened. Well guys what she has done to me so if she is in some pain now then good. They looked at me lost for words at my anger at Connie. Is there no way you can work it out with her Sal? I mean she made a mistake but you are so good together can't you at least try to straighten things out? Divorce is a big step Sal. Please talk to her first. Surely she deserves that at least. Terry's voice was cracking as she pleaded with me. I listened as I looked at her eyes that were filling with tears. She at least was showing the emotion of a good friend. I paused as I tried to look away from those eyes of hers. I had always liked Terry. Phil too come to that and even after the way they had acted in this mess I couldn't deny that what Terry said needed to be taken seriously. I knew I would have to have it out with Connie sooner or later. Okay, I will talk to her, but I want all her stuff gone first. It will be just her and me. I will call and let her know when and where. That, do you? Terry swept towards me hugging me tightly. Phil looked on sheepishly. That's all we can ask and probably more than she can expect too. Yes Sal thank you I will tell her to wait your call. Please don't leave her hanging too long Sal. Phil just looked at me. Sal, I am sorry man. My brother is in his hall. You should kick his as good and proper. I wouldn't blame you one bit if you did. I watched through the window as the couple left. They quickly swung into their car and pulled away towards my soon-to-be ex-wife. I sat and thought over what Terry had said. It was true I needed to speak to Connie of course. I picked up the phone and called Sadie and caught up with her. I spent the next half hour listening to how well Sadie was managing without me. What a woman. Once she had finished with that she started in on me about Connie. It was like listening to my mom. The upshot was that I was ordered to attend her home this evening for dinner with her and her husband. The rest of the day was spent making changes, locks, bedrooms, clothes, 
photographs anything I could think of at the time I moved, trashed, packed or destroyed. I sat staring out the window. I knew I had to make the call. I would do that in the morning. I was too tired tonight. I had another fitful night's sleep. I received a call early in the morning, again just before 7.30. Hello, Sal, it's me Phil. Look I just got a call from a hospital. They have had my brother there for a couple of days. He has been injured somehow. He is in a stable condition it seems. I don't know anything else so that's all really. I hope you don't expect any sympathy from me Phil. As far as I care he is lucky he didn't meet me. Sal, I understand. I wouldn't blame you if you did do it so I won't ask the question. He got what he deserved. You are a stand-up guy and a friend. And I am just sorry I wasn't as good a friend to you as you have been to me. I know I can't undo what is done but I just thought you may want to know about Tony is all. Phil, it was never your fault, remember that. It is what it is. Give my love to Terry. Bye and thanks. Sure bye. I replaced the receiver and stared out the window at the garden. It was peaceful as the odd bird floated onto the bird table and feasted on the feet I loved to put out for them. Sitting in my lounge or watching nature through the glass was always something that calmed me. It also helped me to think, and today was no exception. I used my cell phone to call Carlo to give him the news about Tony. He just remarked it was a job well done. As I sipped my coffee of the day the phone jangled again, I let this one go to the answer machine. As I listened I heard Connie's voice falteringly leave a message. Sal, please, call me, we have to talk. I am so sorry, I need to explain, I need you, I need to come home I am so sorry. There were sobs interspaced between the pleadings and with each word my heart twisted as if it were being strangled in my chest. I found myself breathing heavily as the message ended. I knew I would have to do it today, but I wanted her to wait so she didn't think I was responding to her message. I walked around the house for another couple of hours. As I wandered through the house it seemed bare and empty somehow. I looked round there were gaps where Connie's things used to be. I called Sadie and asked for a couple of guys to come over with a van to shift all her stuff. Within an hour, the boxes and bags I had packed were stowed in the back of a van. I watched as the van pulled away headed for Connie. I knew that very soon my phone would be buzzing as she took delivery of her stuff. This was a one-way trip. Final update. The phone jangled again. It was Terry. Sal, we have Connie's stuff arrived here. Just letting you know we have taken it in. The guys apparently dropped most of it off at a storage facility. Thanks for that Sal. What we have is the stuff you marked as personal. Connie is still in shock I know she called you earlier. Will you call speak to her? Or call her later? Put her on Terry. Let's get this over with. I waited a few seconds until I heard her voice. Hello, Connie. Oh Sal, I am so sorry. I never meant for. You mean you never gave a thought to getting caught, did you? Sal, I. Save it Connie. Now you have the answer to all those questions you never thought to ask yourself all the time you were playing around with someone. Sal, can't we? She started again. You really think there is anything you can say to me that will make it alright? Can I come home and talk to you? Please. I took a deep breath. I will listen but I will not promise anything. I ended the call. I sat back with the sound of her voice in my head. I could feel the pain in her voice. I wondered if she could feel mine. I sat back and thought over my marriage, how happy I thought we had been. Of course, we had our ups and downs but I was convinced we had been happy. Then I thought how could I be so sure, did I really know her at all? I had not suspected anything before but that didn't mean she hadn't done it before. I knew she, the slot would be here soon. I needed to get on top of my emotions and prepare for what was surely the last act of my marriage. The doorbell rang. Pulling it open I saw Connie. The first sight of her since that night in the hotel was shocking. I watched her as she looked around the lounge, the small gasps and then a stifled sob as she noticed the gaps on the walls and around the room where photographs and mementos had been previously. She looked at me with her hand over her mouth and tears forming in her eyes. All gone, I said coldly. If you look through the rest of the house you will see there are many empty spaces. I didn't realize so. I never meant this to happen. I didn't think. I know. But this is the result of your cheating, your infidelity, your extramarital affair, your dating of another man, all yours. I hope you are satisfied. She sat on the sofa. Okay Connie, let's hear it what do you have to say? I am so sorry Sal. I couldn't help it. It was sort of addictive. Connie, just so you know I have spoken to Terry and Phil. They have filled in the gaps in my knowledge. I know what and where, also who with. I just don't know why. I can't answer that. He was just so new and exciting. But you played with him. Not once or even twice but repeatedly for weeks. She looked down at her feet. I know I can't excuse what I did Sal. I was wrong. Is there any way we can get past this? I avoided the question. What happened to your lover? Where is he? Sal, don't call him that he isn't my lover. Yes, I know I had date with him but I don't have any feelings for him. I love you and you only. 
You love me so much that you have been played with him for weeks. So, okay tell me why I should give you any more of my time. You have already been proven to be a liar and a cheat. How do I know that anything you say is the truth? How do you expect me to believe one word that comes out of your face? Tell me. The tears were flowing now down her cheeks as she started to see and feel for the first time the depth of the anger I held for her. So, have you been in contact with your lover? She looked at me through her tears. I haven't heard from him at all. All I know is he is in hospital somewhere. That's all Phil said. I don't want to hear from him. He has ruined my life. I laughed. She looked around the lounge again looking for something to change the tack of this conversation. She gasped as she realized our wedding photo was missing from the mantle. She stood and moved round the room to each empty space. I sat and watched as she took in the missing memories. It was as if all trace of her had been removed from the ground floor. She slumped back down on the sofa. Sal, everything is gone. Is there no chance? She looked at me to feed Sean in her eyes. I took a deep breath. Connie, I loved you like nothing else. What you did was broke my heart out and stomp all over it. Doing it with him was disrespectful and showed a complete disregard for my feelings and that of our friends. You were seen openly carrying on with him. In public, you did this and now you will pay the price. Your lover has already started paying for what he did. Connie our marriage is over. Now if you'll excuse me, I haven't heard anything from you so if you sign the divorce papers we can both get on with our lives. I don't want to see or hear from you anymore. Everything ends with you. Now you should get out of my house. She sat in complete sad as my words. She gathered herself and stood to leave. I followed her to the door as she opened the door to her car she looked back at me and mouthed the word sorry. As she scrambled into her car, I closed the door on her in my marriage. The end. Thank you for being a part of our journey and we look forward to sharing more powerful stories with you in the future. We encourage you to subscribe to our channel and stay connected with our community. Remember, this channel exists because of your support, and I want it to be a place where we can all come together, learn, and have a great time. Your feedback is vital, and I appreciate every single suggestion and comment you provide. Take care yourself and see you soon.